Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, Neil, uh, you should know me anyway, hosting it. But I've got a special guest on, uh, Taylor from Bounds on Tour. Uh, great to have you on, my friend. Um, as always, I've talked to you a couple of seasons, uh, a couple of games last season, like, and some great content. And we've got some good feedback uh, from that as well, mate. Yeah, definitely, mate. Thanks for having me on. It was a good chat last year and obviously new things to talk about today, so it should be interesting. Yeah, uh, all being well, I want to uh, get Bounds on Tour on and, uh, uh, you know, give him a big massive shout out for his uh, Twitter and his YouTube channel. Over 4,000 subscribers on that. And again, it's great content and you get some good watches and good views and good comments on there and all, mate. So, some of what you're doing, it's different. Uh, it's like more or less as it happens kind of thing and action via you are thinking it. Uh, just keep it up, mate. And if you haven't checked him out, please check him out. Subscribe, like, subscribe, and share, and spread it because he's really, really great content as it happens. So uh, keep up good work, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words, mate. Not a problem. Um, so yeah, obviously a long trip, uh, Plymouth away. <laughs> uh, I know it's been banded about certain things on you know media and what happened and what you know what needs addressing, but what short I can it because. Obviously, you're going home and away all of it shop, and uh, you know to travel all that distance down. It's do you think mm, you know could have been a bit a lay in bed kind of thing for what you know what happened? Yeah, well, like you say, I obviously I did every away game last year, and it's my goal again this year because I've created a group of friends. Like I speak to you guys, whether it's on here or at the game, I speak to other YouTubers, other fans. I've got all my mates that go so. It's a goal of mine to go to every game. And regarding Plymouth, obviously, very long journey down there for opening day. We went in, into it with optimism, hoping we can start the season well. I think it took us six and a half hours down and six and a half hours back. Mm. So a bloody long journey for sure. So um, obviously, travelling all that way, we were hoping for a positive result. Uh, new signings in, new manager, hopefully a new style. But like you say, it didn't it didn't start the way we wanted. Uh, I was pretty pleased to see the 900 fans we took down Um we, I didn't expect to take that man in opening day, but we were quite no, noisy for the first 20 minutes till we realised that it wasn't going to be the start to the season we expected. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, overall, I don't want to say dis dis <coughs> I don't want to say disappointed because it's too early to start throwing negativity around. Obviously, something needs to change because we got outclassed by Plymouth front to back. Uh, they had, they could have had four or five in that first half easily, but um, there's a lot of improvement to do, and it were, it were very disappointing for travelling all that way, mate. Yeah, I mean, I I watched it and saw certain things and some it loaded to some players. Like you said, it's too early in season. It's one game in and certain traits were there and for for such as like such as like Cole and people calling out Kitchen and Cundy and Styles and stuff like that. I kind of agree with some comments and like I disagree with some of them because I thought Cundy for me it was his first game. So yeah, he made some odd mistakes. But what I were impressed with when he were on one-on-one -on -one and they brought through, we actually tracked back and put last-ditch tackling. But his last season, wouldn't have had that, but he get up ghost. And for me, such a styles, I, I just don't think he wants to be here, mate. I, body language, his demeanour, everything, just don't look right, mate. No, I, I can totally agree with that. Um, obviously, you don't want, like you said, you don't want to single out players, but Obviously, Duff saw that Cundy were getting caught out from the ball in behind. It wasn't just him that were getting caught out from ball in behind. It happened into Williams up right and Cadden up left. Uh, I don't know if it's down to tactics or we were just too slow, but we were getting caught out all over the pitch. The like, likes of other players, obviously, um, Cole, you can sit here and slag him off all he wants, but he's our striker at the moment. I, I want to say you've got a backing, but if, you, if, you're, if you're if you not a happy clapper and in, you, you know Barnsley, you, you know he's not good enough. He's been here before, and we've, we've obviously signed him back. When he starts on that pitch, we, we know what he's going to do. We know the reality that he's not going to score goals, he's not going to hold the ball up, and he's not going to win any interceptions when he presses. He's just going to chase shadows. It's the harsh reality of Cole. And talking about styles, it's um, for me, a uh, great to see him in starting lineup, don't get me yeah. wrong. Uh, but um, he, he was running around like he didn't want to get injured, like he was ready for a move. Mm. If that is the case, why are we starting him if he's leaving? Mm. Are, are we keeping him and he's just not the player we think he is? I'm not sure. There's a lot of questions without singling out anyone too early on. Yeah. And I, I, people like saying, and like putting a lot of blame on Cole and Mr. Other, and like you've just said, Vian, some great points, what you said. I mean, 
but he had him before and you kind of know what you're going to get with, with him. He's, in, he's not going to ball up and be sent over and yeah, all spot on. And what I were also finding back as well is that if you're not going to be creating chances for attackers to, to, uh, to score, then it kind of falters and his defence at times looked okay. I'm not going to say solid, it looked okay because we're getting caught out with ball, but back, like I said, in midfield, I thought Luke O'Connor were trying his best. Benson, he just looked, I don't know, he wanted to put a tackle in. For me, he could have, he could have I won't say take man out, but he could have gone for a ball on the sidelines and just gone for a throw in. Because it won't, for me, it was like going up to half time. And like I said, Styles, he, he, like I said, he don't want to get injured, you know, scupper potential moves or what might be happening. So when you look at that, pressure's coming on, on to us, his defence. But then when you look up, it's like, well, what are Richardson and, you know, Cole feeding off? Apart from Nicky Cadden, I think late on where he got a crossing for H and the eight crossbar and uh, Benson followed up and you know blocked on line. Apart from that, it was we're not creating, we're not we're not creating the chances. And I think until that gets addressed, we, yeah, we can bring all the strikers in we want, but if some weird outline, we've got to create something, mate, don't we? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like like you're saying, if the centre mid can't provide for the strikers, then what can the strikers do? Uh Luke O'Connell. I, I obviously I was trying to watch him like specifically because unfortunately I haven't been able to get to any pre-season games and all, all I heard were people singing prayers about him saying that he's going to be a great player not mm. disputing that early on but he, he looked like he wanted the ball all the time but for me he was in the middle of Benson and Styles who who didn't want it as much as him so he, yeah. he got very isolated in there and couldn't get the ball and couldn't play what he wanted talking about not giving the strikers service and if you don't give them service they can't do what they want but I agree with that to an extent because when we look we look back at Morris last year, um, throughout our midfield were obviously shocking last year. We, we hardly traded over at strikers, but Morris picked up loose balls. He went and intercepted loose balls. Mm. He created stuff by his scent, mm. which hopefully Norwood can be that type of player. But when you've got Cole up there and Aitchinson, who was more of an in-behind player, you're not going to get that type. So, like you say, we need to bring strikers in, but we also need to work on back to front and assisting the strikers before that. Yeah, good call that, mate. Maybe Morris dropping back and, like you said, be hoping that someone of that attacking option can do that. But at the minute, we haven't got it, have we? So we're going to be going to the Cheltenham game. It's, again, very great result at weekend, to be fair, Cheltenham. Uh, they're under a new gaffer. Obviously, Duff going to come up against Cheltenham. I mean, it's, we could pick points and faults, so you've been everywhere. But looking on the team, what? You know, because people have said this, people that finished game against Plymouth should be starting against Cheltenham. Do you kind of agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's early on in the season, and when teams start to lose, sometimes not. I won't say panic, but managers try to change tactics to get them out of the hole. Not saying we're in a hole, but obviously, we're in a situation where we need to bounce back. Hmm. But um, when Wolf and Thomas come on, we we did look more lively. The last, the added five minutes, and maybe a couple of minutes before that. When, when obviously we needed to equalise and we went for it. We looked dangerous. We created a couple of our ch- half chances. We had that one cleared offline, which could have been on ball. Uh, like with the subs that were on and we went for it, we looked dangerous. But um, going into Cheltenham game, it's going to be, you've got, for me, you, you, you want to say you've got to go in for three points, but I look at the fixtures after that. You've obviously got Middlesbrough and Cuff, which you're not, going to expect, you're not expecting to go to a championship mm. team and win. And then you've got Derby away, which is a very tough fixture. So we we need, hopefully, Duff can obviously get into him this week, get some positivity back in there after a, a poor first game. And we can just, it feels like we didn't really adapt to his style because there were a lot of players that didn't seem like they were playing together, if you know what I mean. Like the chemistry wasn't there. It's still early on. There's still yeah. new players. But hopefully he can he can make them gel a bit. We, we can get a decent result against Cheltenham and, get a bit of confidence back into him because we've got a very, very tough run after Cheltenham. Yeah, it kind of leads me on to uh, end question kind of thing, really. And a good point what you made is that the Derby game, obviously, they, they bought into this way. Away fans are doing £20 for away fans. And I think it's a great thing what club did. Um, I know board have got a lot of stick about prices with tickets missing over. But they've like said, no, if you know, we'll charge £20 for away fans as long as you're doing the same to us. And they seem to have like started something here, and it's great to see them because I mean, there's going to be a couple over a couple of thousand tickets that made available. So, at 20 pounds a ticket, I mean, it's a great 
I think it's a great thing, especially this day and age as well, with cost of living, everything going up, we all know, with prices. It makes that bit for fan, or you know, such as you. I mean, you'll go to every one without without fail. So again, do, do you think that it should be even at championship? Do you think stuff like this should be happening at championship as well, uh Taylor? Is that we should have a set piece a, a set price for away? You know, because you've got to put into your uh, your travelling costs, then your bit of food, and then coming back. It's a long day for you. So again, I think twenty pound. Do you think twenty pounds pretty reasonable and all right? Yeah, I think that's more than reasonable. If obviously there's been campaigns in the past, you know that twenty is plenty mm. uh, marketing thing. Uh, but for me, you look at um, when you, like if you sit and watch football league show or whatever channel it's on now, when you watch the highlights. A lot of ground, you see too many empty seats, and for like, for the, for the cost, like you say, the cost of living and all that, even for home fans to get to the game, mm. to buy the food and drinks, it, it's get it's getting an expensive ordeal. Like I remember the other year when I went with my dad, he had to pay, I think it was forty some quid for one at away days. It might have been when we played Chef Wednesday a few years back, and after that, he just says, "I'm not paying that." Mm. And then th this year. My, my dad, you know, he's been and done. He's been and done away games in the past. I'm young, so I'm energetic and up for it. But like he's seen that Derby's um, obviously twenty quid. So straight away, that's put that fifty fifty in his mind to come. Yeah. So it gives like, or even some fans that don't normally go to games, they might think Derby. Oh, it's only an hour and a half away. It's only twenty quid. Well, like, mm. we'll have a drive down, have a day out. Mm. It it's a great opportunity, and like like you say, when you've got. You've got, like you say, you've got to take into consideration you've got your travel, uh, whether you go on a coach, a car, a train. And obviously, you've got to eat throughout the day. You've got to drink throughout the day. And then to add your ticket price on top of that, some of these days can, can become very expensive. But obviously, you choose whether you want to do that. But the £20 as a whole is going to increase attendances, hopefully get better away followings for us as well and um, entice a lot more people to go to the games. Yeah, good, good call. I mean, like I said, as soon as I saw that uh, twenty, you know, twenty is plenty kind of thing. I thought, yeah, it's a good. I just thought other teams, you know, clubs buy into this kind of thing. And like, like I, said, I know you, when I know a couple of other people like go to away uh, games pretty regular, and they said more the same as you. Some of you like, you know, your Chef Wednesdays and Chef United in Championship and that, but like categorise it, don't mean it's like thirty eight or thirty nine quid. I'm like, wow, really? Yeah, it's only dark road yet. You know, get it, get it realistic. You're going to get more in. It's going to be a better atmosphere. And when you all come to our place, it's the same again. And it, like you said, it's. I'd rather see, like what you said, Veer, when you look at on, on, on telly, empty seats, but a full stadium, there's a better buzz, a better vibe, a better atmosphere, isn't there? You know, it's proper buzzing. So I think that's great. Uh, before I let you go, uh, what do you think of Lionesses? Well done, England. BG oh, Germans. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Uh, finally good to get a win over Germans. That first goal was very good, wasn't it? That cheeky little chip. Yeah, it was good. It was good to take that. Yeah. I thought, oh no, don't sky it, but it was proper class, like so. Yeah. A bit, a bit of class showing showing us how to do it, I suppose. So, <laughs> but it's great to see for England and that, and you know that feel good factor again. Uh, positive stuff, or well, stuff was going off in the world. But uh, Taylor. Great to have you on, my friend. Uh, hope I can get you on again soon because you've got some great insight and some uh, good knowledge in that. And people what are watching, uh, please, please check out the Twitter and YouTube. Bounds on tour. It's great content. I mean, it's like straight away. And if you if you haven't already seen it, then check it out because it's like your beer. And it's uh, before game, through game, after game. It's all the job lot. So you get a breakdown and everything. So, Taylor... Keep up the good work, mate. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed. I know a lot of people are. I hope you get some more subscribers and followers as well, mate, on your channel. No, mate, thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. A lot of hard work goes into it, you know, all travelling. I just try to get, give it a, like, for you, for like you guys that can't go to away games or even to own games if you live elsewhere. Like I try to make it so you, you guys are there. You can get the best insight. And the, and the main thing for me is being honest. Like I don't yeah. want to come on and... If we go 1-0 down, moaning about other teams, saying they don't deserve it, I like to be honest, give an honest review so people mm -hmm. that are out there can really feel how the games went. And that's all it's about, mate. It's all about opinions. It's just about being honest and call it as it is, as it happens. Because like you said, you know, we could be 1-0 down. And to be fair, we haven't deserved out from it. So you've got to credit where your credit's due. And that's what I've noticed on your channel. You'll do that. You'll, you'll never call out what's indifferent. I'm thinking, no, nah, no, it's all... 
you know, it's a true reflection and that game's gone. And then when you hear other people or certain other people will say, yeah, yeah, well, we could have been three or four knock down at half time. It's like, yeah, but this is how it's coming across. It's not like, oh, we were lucky only 1-0. You're calling it as it is. And like I say, you've got some great con uh, comments and stuff like that, mate. So keep up good work. I'm appreciated. And I like uh, what you're doing at the minute. No, thank you very much, mate. And thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Like I said, I tweeted to you earlier. Uh, before I even started my channel, I used to obviously watch, you know, Luke and the old guys. I used to watch them every week to see their perspective of the match day vlogs. Obviously, you've got your own different type of feel to it. Mm. We all appreciate the hard work you're putting in, getting guests on, doing reviews straight after, doing videos on signing players. We all appreciate that. So I've took inspiration from you guys over the years. So it's a pleasure to be on, mate. No problem. We'll help one another out and I'll be happy and I'll be one being championship next season. <laughs> Hopefully, right? <laughs> One thing left to say, you were Eds.